O Most Holy Mother, intercede for us so that we may well understand the teachings of your Divine Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the explanations of the Fathers of the Church. O Immaculate Virgin, I offer you this work and ask that you bless those who hear it. And may it be for the greatest honor and glory of God. Amen. Cleanse my heart and my lips, O Almighty God, who didst cleanse with a burning coal the lips of the prophet Isaias, and vouchsafe in thy loving kindness so to purify me that I may be enabled worthily to announce thy holy gospel. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily and becomingly announce His gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew Courage under persecution, Jesus sent these twelve with these recommendations, No disciple is above his teacher, no slave above his master. It is enough for the disciple that he become like his teacher, for the slave that he become like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more those of his household? Therefore do not be afraid of them. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light, what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid, you are worth more than many sparrows. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. Comments from the Church Fathers St. John Chrysostom, Homily in Matthew, Homily 34, 1. Because it should come to pass that his disciples among their other persecutions should suffer loss of character, which to many is the most grievous of all calamities, he consoles them from his own example, and those things that were spoken of him, a comfort to which no other can be compared. St. Hilary of Poitiers, in Matthew, 10. For the Lord, the Light Eternal, the Captain of the Faithful, the Parent of Immortality, set before His disciples this solace of the sufferings that should come upon them, that we should embrace it as our glory when we are made like to our Lord in suffering, whence He says, No disciple is above his teacher, no slave above his master. It is enough for the disciple that he become like his teacher, for the slave that he become like his master. St. John Chrysostom, Homily in Matthew, Homily 34, 1. Understand, so long as he is a disciple or servant, he is not above his master or lord by the nature of honor. And do not here object to me such cases as rarely happen, but receive this according to the common course of things. Remigius of Auxerre. He calls himself master and lord, by disciple and servant he denotes his apostles. Gloss, St. Thomas Aquinas. As much as to say, be not indignant that ye suffer things, which I also suffer, because I am your Lord, who do what I will, and your Master, who teach you what I know to be profitable for you. Remigius of Auxerre. And because this sentence seemed not to agree with the foregoing words, he shows what they mean by adding, if they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more those of his household. St. John Chrysostom, Homilii in Matthew, Homily 34, 1. He said not here, slaves, but those of his household, to show how dear they were to him, as elsewhere he said, I will not call you slaves, but my friends. John 15 verse 15 Remigius of Auxerre As much as to say, ye therefore will not seek worldly honors and human glory, while you see me pursuing the redemption of mankind through mocking and contumely. St. John Chrysostom, Homilii in Matthew, Homily 34, 1. And he says not only, if they have reviled the master of the house, but expresses the very words of railing, for they had called him Beelzebub. St. Jerome. 
Beelzebub is the idol of Acheron who is called in the Book of Kings, the God of Flies, 2 King 1 colon 3, Bel, signifying, idol, Zebub, a fly. The prince of the demons he calls by the name of the foulest of idols, which is so called because of the uncleanness of the fly, which destroys the sweetness of ointment. Remigius of Auxer. After the foregoing consolation, he adds another which is not less, saying that they should not fear their persecutors. And the reason for not fearing them is that therefore do not be afraid of them. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. St. Jerome. How is it possible to ignore the vices of many in the present time? He speaks here of the future time, when God will judge the hidden actions of men, and for he will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will manifest the motives of our hearts, 1 Corinthians 4 verse 5. The meaning then is this, Fear not the cruelty of persecutors, nor the anger of blasphemers, for the day of judgment will come, when both your virtue and your iniquity will be revealed. St. Hilary of Poitiers, in Matthew 10. Therefore he recommends them not to fear threats, or reproaches, or the power of persecutors, because in the day of judgment the nothingness and weakness of all these things will be revealed. St. John Chrysostom, Homilii in Matthew, Homily 34, 1. Or, to put it another way. At first glance, it seems that the words you have just uttered have a universal meaning, they do not refer, however, to all, but only to those of whom he has spoken before. As if to say, if you suffer by hearing the outrages, remember that you will soon be free from all suspicion. They will call you soothsayers, magicians, seducers, but wait a little and you will see how you will be called saviors of the whole universe, when by reality itself you will appear as benefactors, then men will not listen to their speeches, but to the truth of things. Remigius of Auxerre some believe that in this passage the Lord promises His disciples to reveal through them all the hidden mysteries that remain veiled by the letter of the law, that is why the Apostle said, When Israel returns to the Lord, the veil will be taken away, 2 Corinthians 3 verse 16. Would this be the meaning of His words, Why do you fear your persecutors, you whose dignity is so great that through you the mysteries of the law and the prophets have been made manifest? St. John Chrysostom, Homilii in Matthew. Homily 34, 2. After having delivered them from all fear, and having made them superior to reproach, the opportune time has come to speak to them of the freedom of preaching, saying to them, What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light, what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. St. Hilary of Poitiers, in Matthew, 10. We read nowhere that the Lord used to preach at night, or teach his doctrine in darkness, if therefore he expresses himself in this way. It is because all his speeches are darkness to carnal men, and his word is like night to the unfaithful. He says, therefore, that his divine teachings must be proclaimed with all the freedom of faith and confession. Remigius of Auxerre. The meaning is therefore as follows, what I say to you in the darkness, that is, among the unbelieving Jews, speak in the light, that is, preach to the believers, what you hear whispered, that is that which is spoken to them in secret, proclaim on the housetops, that is, in public and before all. We say, in effect, he spoke in his ear, meaning in secret. Rabinus Morrow. Surely when he said, proclaim on the housetops, he is referring to the custom of Palestine, where the roofs are for dwelling, for they do not end at a point, but form a flat surface. Therefore, preaching from the rooftops means speaking publicly, in front of a large number of listeners. Gloss, St. Thomas Aquinas. Or, to put it another way, what I say to you in the darkness, that is, when you are still in carnal fear, speak in the light, that is, trusting in the truth, when you are enlightened by the Holy Spirit. And what you hear whispered, that is, what you have perceived only by hearing, proclaim, completing it with your works, on the housetops, that is, in your bodies, which are the dwelling place of souls. St. Jerome. Or again, what I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light, that is, what you have heard in the mystery, preach openly, and what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops, that is, what I taught you in a small village in Judea, boldly publish in all the cities of the whole world.
St. John Chrysostom, Homilii in Matthew, Homily 34, 2. Just as he had said to them, He who believes in me will do the works I do, and will do even greater than them, John 14 verse 12, so here he shows how everything is done through them, rather than by themselves, as if you were saying, I have made the beginning, but it is through you that I want to accomplish everything else. These words contain not only a commandment, but a prediction of the future, and they tell the apostles that they will triumph over all obstacles. St. Hilary of Poitiers, in Matthew, 10. We are constantly to sow the knowledge of God, and to reveal by the light of preaching the profound secret of the doctrine of the gospel, without fearing those who have power only over the bodies but have no right over the soul, hence he adds, and do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. St. John Chrysostom, Homilii in Matthew, Homily 34, 2. See how he makes them superior to all, advising them to despise, for fear of God, not only cares, calumnies, and dangers, but also that which seems to all the most terrible, death itself, wherefore he adds, rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. St. Jerome the name Gehenna is not found in the ancient books, it is first used by the Savior. Let us then examine the occasion in which it is used. We read not only once in the scriptures that there was an idol of Baal near Jerusalem, at the foot of Mount Moriah, where the spring of Siloam springs. This valley and its little plain were irrigated and leafy, most delightful, and contained a grove consecrated to the idol. To so great folly and madness had the people of Israel come, that, forsaking the neighborhood of the temple, they offered their sacrifices there, and concealing an austere ritual under a voluptuous life, they burned their sons in honor of a daemon. This place was called, Gehenna, that is, the valley of the children of Hinnom. These things are fully described in Kings and Chronicles, and the prophet Jeremiah. 2 Kings 23 verses 10 and 2 Chronicles 26 colon 3 Jeremiah 7 verse 32, God threatens that he will fill the place with the carcasses of the dead, that it be no more called Tophet and Baal, but Polyandrian, that is, the tomb of the dead. Hence the torments and eternal pains with which sinners shall be punished are signified by this word. St. Augustine, De Civitate Day, 13, 2. These tortures will not begin until the soul is united to the body by an indissoluble union. And yet this state is justly called the death of the soul, because then it will no longer live by the life of God, and the death of the body, because under the blow of this eternal damnation, although man retains the feeling, it is no longer gentle in the will, nor salutary in rest, but a principle of pain and pain, this state therefore deserves to be called more of a state of death than a state of life. St. John Chrysostom, Homilii in Matthew, Homily 34, 2. Observe also that he does not promise to deliver them from death, but advises them to despise it, which is much more than being delivered from it, and that in that same speech he insinuates to them the dogma of immortality. After removing from their souls the fear of death, so that the apostles would not think that if they were killed they would be forsaken by God, he resumes his discourse on the providence of God, and says to them, Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. St. Jerome. This is the meaning, if small animals do not perish without God's permission, if His providence extends to all creatures, and if those who are subject to death cannot perish without God's will, you, whose destiny is eternal, need not fear that providence may abandon you during this life. St. Hilary of Poitiers, in Matthew, 10. In a mystical sense, what is sold is the body and the soul, and the one to whom they are sold is sin. Those who sell the two birds for one roast are those who, born to take flight and soar to heaven with spiritual feathers, sell themselves for a miserable sin, but, captured by the price of the voluptuousness of the present and exposed for sale for the luxury of this life, they are entirely corrupted by such actions. Now it is God's will that one of them should rise by flying above the other, but one law which has God equally as its author decrees that the other tends more to fall than to rise. If the two took flight together, they would be as one, and the body would thus have become spiritual, so also if the two are sold to sin, the soul contracts the earthly mode of being from the filth of vices, and the two become but one, who is abandoned to the earth.
Saint Jerome. The words even all the hairs of your head are counted, show the immense providence of God toward men, and are a proof of that ineffable affection of our God, to whom there is nothing hidden. Saint Hilary of Poitiers, in Matthew, 10. The action of telling indicates the diligence that one has in relation to something. Saint John Chrysostom, Homilii in Matthew, Homily 34, 2. He said this, not because God counts our hairs, but to express his diligent knowledge and the extent of his providence over all things. Saint Jerome. Those who deny the resurrection mock the interpretation given by the Church, as if we were saying that all hairs are numbered, and that all those who have been cut should be resurrected, but the Saviour did not say, Your hairs shall be saved, but they are numbered. The reference to the number expresses its knowledge by God, not its preservation. St. Augustine, De Civitate Dei, 22, 19. One may also ask, Will all the hairs that have been cut return to their owner? If they were restored, who would not be horrified by such a deformity? But as soon as we understand and admit in principle that the body loses nothing of that which can give it grace and beauty, we shall also understand that what would naturally produce an odious deformity will be united to the mass of the body and not to the members, whose form would thus be disfigured. In the same way, if an earthen vessel is reduced to dust and then remade of the same matter, it is not necessary that the part of clay which formed the wing should now be on the same wing, or that which formed the bottom should now be in the same place, it is enough only that everything recomposes the whole, that is, that the totality of matter is in the totality of the vessel, and that, thus, no part of it has been lost. If, therefore, the haircut so often were to make the head deformed, they would not return to it, because, thanks to the natural mutability of matter, they would take the form of flesh to occupy any other place in the body, according to the harmony of the parts that compose it. Indeed, we might interpret these words, not a hair of your head shall perish, not as to its length, but as to its number, as the words, even all the hairs of your head are counted, seem to indicate. St. Hilary of Poitiers, in Matthew, 10. For it would not be worthy of God to tell what must perish. But that we may know that nothing that makes up our being must perish, assures us that our own hairs are numbered. We must therefore fear no danger to our bodies, and therefore he adds, so do not be afraid, you are worth more than many sparrows. St. Jerome. These words make clearer the sense of what is said just above, namely, that we should not fear those who can only kill the body, for if the smallest animals cannot perish without God's knowing it, how much more can the man whom God has clothed with the apostolic dignity? St. Hilary of Poitiers. Or, when he says that they are worth more than many birds, he declares that he prefers the faithful whom he has chosen to the multitude of infidels, for the end for the latter is the earth while for the former it is the flight to the heavens. Remigius of Auxerre. In a mystical sense, Christ is the head, the apostles are the hair, therefore he says beautifully that these are numbered, for the names of the saints are written in heaven. St. John Chrysostom, Homilii in Matthew, Homily 34, 3. The Lord, having cast out the fear that troubled the souls of the disciples, gives them new strength by the following words not only casting out their fear, but stimulating them by the hope of greater rewards for freely spreading the truth, saying, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. Note carefully that it does not properly say he who confesses me, but, as it says in the Greek text, he who confesses in me, thus showing you that it is not by his own power, but aided by grace from above, that he who is confessed confesses himself. St. Hilary of Poitiers, in Matthew, 10. This is the conclusion of the foregoing, for once strengthened by such a doctrine, it is opportune to have the constancy to confess freely to God. Remigius of Auxerre. This confession must be understood as the one of which the Apostle speaks, with the heart one believes in order to obtain righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made in order to obtain salvation, Rom 10.10. So do not think that you can be saved without the confession of the mouth, for it says not only whosoever therefore shall confess me, but adds before men, and again, but whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. St. Hilary of Poitiers, 
in Matthew 10. In these words he declares that he will give before his father the same testimony that we give him before men. St. John Chrysostom, Homily in Matthew, Homily 34, 3. Let us observe here that, just as in punishment the punishment is greater, so in reward the retribution is greater. As if to say, you have first overflowed, confessing or denying me, now I am overflowing, giving you greater things, there I will confess or deny you. Therefore, if you do something good and do not receive a reward, do not be troubled, a superabundant reward awaits you in the future. If, on the other hand, you have done something bad and have not been punished, do not despise it, for the punishment is equally reserved for you, unless you change and do better. Rabinus Morrow We must know that even the heathen cannot deny the existence of God, but the infidels can deny that God is Father and Son. Therefore, the Son will confess someone before the Father, because it is through the Son that one has access to the Father, and because the Son says, Come, you blessed of my Father, Matthew 25 verse 34. Remigius of Auxerre. He will deny him who denies him, refusing him access to the Father, expelling him from the presence of his divinity and that of the Father. St. John Chrysostom, Homily in Matthew, Homily 34. 3. And it requires not only mental but also oral confession, in order to encourage us to free preaching and to a greater love, making us more exalted. And these words are addressed to everyone, not only to the apostles, because he wants to make manly not only the apostles, but all their disciples. He who is faithful to this commandment will not only teach publicly with holy fortitude, but will easily convince hearts, for obedience to his word has brought many men to the apostles. Rabinus Morrow. Or again, Jesus confesses by that faith that works by love, faithfully fulfilling his commandments, and he who does not obey his precepts denies it. We have reached the end of another day of comments on the gospel that the Holy Church proposes for us to meditate on today, using the Catina Aurea. Thanks so much for following along. I ask that, if possible, subscribe to the channel, comment, like and share. May Our Lady reward you for this act of charity. And see you tomorrow, with God's graces. Amen.